Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. This is part three of our chassis stiffening project, but we are going to be painting today. And those of you new to the channel, welcome. We're going to be using POR15 with an HVLP gun. So that's high volume, low pressure. Guns that look like this, they have a cup on top. We're going to talk about that later in this episode, but let's talk about POR15 real quick. POR stands for paint over rust. Sometimes I refer to it as POR15. Nothing wrong with that, just as long as you know that I know. <laughs> now, the reason I love this stuff so much is that I've had some massive success with it. I actually painted the 69 GTO frame behind me about 15 years ago with a paintbrush, if you could imagine, and it's held up great. Now that I know how to spray it, I spray it on everything. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And if it's your first time with the POR product, they actually make kits that have the cleaner, the metal prep, the paint, disposable gloves, disposable brushes in one kit, in a little small kit. Give it a shot, you might like it. Now today, what's a little bit different is that I, they have an accelerator. The accelerator helps with our drying times. Uh, POR15 relies on humidity in the air to dry. So the more humid it is, the faster it dries. I'm in California. The last time I sprayed it, it took like four hours before I can do a second coat. So that's new to me. I'm gonna try that today. The reason I'm spraying, as you can imagine, using a brush on this, this is just a small piece. Here's the larger piece that this is a part of. As you can tell, it's big, it's bulky, it's got round edges. Uh, it's got crevices. I'd much rather spray that. It takes so much. It'd be a uh, better use of my time, so to speak. So we're going to do that today. Now, if you've never painted before, it's okay. I will show you what I use for an HVLP gun. But for any painting project, I don't care if it's a rattle can or house paint, you got to make sure that surface is clean. So POR came out with this uh, cleaner that does not have oil-based products in it. So you can wash it off with water. So do this as much as you can to make sure there is no dirt or residue or oil on your parts. If you have paint on an old part, try and get that paint off because this will only stick to that paint. And if that paint is bad and it peels off, then there goes your good paint. So make sure you try and get down to steel. It's okay if that steel is rusted, but get the chunks off. Um, and if you're working with brand new steel, Brand new steel comes with rust preventative on it from the factory. I don't care what you bought. It has rust preventative on it. Make sure you get it off. That's why you use this clean as much as you, as much as you possibly can. If you want to use an oil-based cleaner, knock yourself out. But I would use this as the last step. I'm not going to film this step. Read the directions. Now the most important step is metal prep. We're going to do that first in this video. But before we get there, if you like what I do, consider getting an FMG hat, support the channel. There's a link below and subscribe if you haven't, because we're going to have nothing but fun here. So let's get to that next step where we put on this metal prep, which is acid. So get your rubber gloves on. All right, got my gloves on. It's time to use some metal prep. We or I already let this sit overnight for 24 hours. And I like to put it in a squirt bottle. Our plan here is to soak the surface and keep it wet for over 20 minutes. So this is a pretty large part. That's why a squirt bottle works well. I'm just going to go around and keeping it wet. I'm going to have a paper towel that you can soak. And you're just going to use that to dab your drips. There's some drips here, so I'm going to dab it. And this stuff, the surface rust you're going to see, is going to start coming off. Look at that. That is awesome. So I'm going to go around the whole part, 20 minutes, for the power of time-lapse photography. This should be about one minute for you guys. There we go. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. Do you see how that cleaned up? That's all you do is just go around, make sure everything's coated at all times. And now that it's been 20 minutes, you rinse it off with water. So I'm gonna go do that out in the driveway. You can use a squirt bottle, whatever you want. Be right back. Okay, here's the next day. Now you guys remember, I said this was acid. It's actually phosphoric acid. 
and the way it dries and reacts with the steel, it creates a zinc phosphate coating, which is awesome because that's another rust preventative measure and it etches the steel. So after the process, it's fully dry, you're gonna get some residue. So get a wet rag, this is just water and paper towel, wipe down the entire piece, you're gonna have some fall apart, doesn't matter right now, but you're gonna get some of that residue to wipe off on the towel. That's fine, you want the big chunks to come off, sometimes there's a little bit more white residue from the acid, but wipe down the whole part. Oh, I forgot to mention something. At this point in the project, make sure you always wear gloves and anytime you're painting. So after your final step of cleaning, whatever part you're doing, put gloves on because the oil and residues on your fingertips will actually remain on the part and paint won't stick to those points. So always be clean from here on forward. And that's how I treat everything. So I don't have any accidental oil deposits. So let's get on to the next step. After that dries, I'm gonna start masking because this section of steel, I still need to weld and I don't want paint. So I'm gonna use like a one and a half inch piece of masking tape around all the areas that I have to mask for welding. And then we'll go to the next step, which is gonna get nuts here. Before we get to spraying, we need to discuss overspray because when you have a rattle can and you're spraying parts, you typically can just mask like the, say the background, the cabinets there. But when you have an HVLP gun, there's a ton of air coming out of here and there is gonna be overspray everywhere. Now, typically I like to paint my parts out in the backyard, but we just had the backyard redone and uh, my wife would have my ass if I got paint everywhere. And frankly, she would take half of everything I have and driving a half a GTO is probably not gonna work very well. <laughs> so we're gonna come up with a paint booth. Check this out paint booth just like that yeah super easy to put up i did a video on it uh, some time ago go check it out granted it's an older video so excuse me but it's only like five bucks really to put it up let me give you a tour here it is boys and girls pretty decent room it's about six by five so i'll have to paint one side turn this whole thing around paint the other side and then i've hung up the uh, transmission brace. So, pretty slick, not bad for five bucks. Let's talk about uh, air supply real quick. So I have a 60 gallon air compressor. I have uh, a regulator here. It's also an oil separator at 80, set at 80 PSI. It goes up my wall and it branches out. I can run air tools this way, but this line comes over here. It's about 25 feet of run to what they call an air dryer. There's a picture of it. De Vilbus makes that too. It's the lowest cost one I can find and it works really well. I only use it for painting. So I have a ball valve at here shielding it. Then I have another nipple down here for, you know, other air tools and stuff. But this is not uh, a mistake. This is at a slope because I, I want water condensation to run back into the tank and there's a drain in the bottom then i have an automatic drain every time this runs it opens that little drain for a couple seconds and lets oil and water out into a drip pan and the reason you want that is every time your air compressor runs it puts heat into the air causes condensation and you don't want that condensation going into your gun because that just wreaks havoc on your paint you get what they call uh, fish eyes in your paint it's nasty. So you want to have dry air running to your gun. Now when we're talking about guns and if you're shopping for a gun, I don't know if they make this anymore. I'm sure there's still some left around in boxes. I'll have a link below to my Amazon store uh, where this, where I got this, but this gun at the time, I think it has a CFM rating of around eight. So eight CFM is the gun. You want to look at your gun rating because your compressor needs to be higher than your gun. This is an 18 CFM compressor. Imagine if the CFM was lower than the gun, your compressor would be running nonstop, putting a ton of moisture into the air, killing your dryer, ruining your paint job. So keep that in mind if you're gonna go this route. Now that we're talking guns, we gotta talk about tip sizes real quick. Tip size is the millimeter size of that hole the needle fits in. 
this system actually comes with three different tips. And luckily, a 1.5 millimeter tip comes with this system. POR15 recommends a 1.4 or 1.5 millimeter tip, so we're golden on that regard. The other reason I like this system so much is this is how it comes. It comes with a standard cup. Most HVLP gum, guns come with a cup like that, but there's an alternative cup you can use. It's a disposable. So there's a little liner that goes in here. We got a cap and it screws right onto the top here. But when this is in action, I'll show you this when I start painting. See how this is soft? You can actually move all the air out of that and you can paint upside down in any angle. It is kind of brilliant and it's disposable. So once we're done, you just throw that out and reuse this. As you can tell, I used it a lot. Before we get to mixing, I wanted to show you guys what I use to degrease. I mentioned earlier, if you don't have gloves on your hands and you're handling your parts, you're getting all this oil and stuff from your hands on your part. I use this as my very last cleaning step on anything I paint. And if any of you guys have seen my videos, you've seen that, seen me do this, I put this into a pressurized vessel and you can spray it, wipe it off. That's the final step. And that ensures that your fingerprints didn't uh, add any oil to your part. So now let's get to mixing. Here are the ingredients we're using today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm using four ounce cans of POR15. They come in several different sizes. The problem is sometimes when you seal it back up, you can't get it open. So I've seen a lot of tricks. A lot of you guys input in my last video, like maybe even drill a hole, put a bolt in there, because then you can unscrew it. Because when this stuff hardens, it's like rock hard. So I'd much prefer to use the smaller sizes and I get them in a six pack right here. Now we're also going to be using solvent as a thinner because we want to thin it to no more than 5%. And I'll show you how to figure that out. And our dry time accelerator, which I haven't used yet. Now it's really cool. It's got, uh, you know, you can actually fill it to the right size. It's one quarter ounce per quart of product. Eight ounces here is one quarter quart. So that means we need to do one quarter of our quart size. So there's the one quarter gradient. So half and half again. So not a lot. I actually marked it on the back already. So that's how much accelerator we're gonna use. Stir stick, and most importantly, one of these cool mixing cups. These come in different sizes. And as you can see right here, here's our percentage. So if we're gonna reduce it by 5%, it's half of the 10 mark. So whatever product we put in here, it probably won't be enough. I'll probably have to use a smaller cup, but I wanted to show you that if you put one serving size, so to speak, the next column is your 10%. So it would be half of that. So it's not a lot, you have to be careful. Now, if you wanna get these for your my killer margarita recipe, it's right here, four to two to one. Four parts tequila, two parts freshly squeezed lime juice, and one part agave nectar. Stir that up, shake it on ice, pour it on ice, and you'll be the talk of the town, I guarantee it. And then after you're done with that, put some Grand Marnier on top. Now, the way this is used, so let's say you put your four servings of tequila in, it goes to that line, and then you find the next four, that's your two, so you add that much lime juice. The next four is your agave nectar, that's how these cups work. They're really cool. Now, back to our mission. I'm gonna get a smaller cup of this, pour our paint in, and we're gonna get to town. I've decided to use this quart container because eight ounces is right on the side. Nice measuring tool. So we'll be filling up right to about there. There we go. One can. Two cans. So it might be tough to tell there. So what I'm doing is I have to do that difference on the four line, half of that distance, which actually brings us up to right about the original four. That's how much solvent I'm gonna put in. Mm, boom, right there. Our pre-measured accelerator. It's not a lot. Okay, it's time to stir it. I'm gonna stir it back and forth like this. You can go around, but do not add air bubbles to this. You do not want to shake it either before you put it in. That adds air. And remember we talked about earlier, air and humidity, oxygen, humidity, 
makes this cure faster. You don't want any uh, obscure behavior with your paint. So good test. When you pick up your stick, it should flow off the stick like that, not as big drops. If there's big drops, you need to add a little bit more thinner. So I think we're good to go. So I have my liner in my spray cup. And what we want to do is put a strainer in there just in case we got any dust or chunks or any air bubbles. We'll take the air bubbles out too, which is nice. I'm going to let it sit there for a minute. Set that aside. So they also have these strainers that you could put in the cup. They're optional, but I like to use them because like I mentioned earlier, it helps remove the air as it's going through the strainer into the gun. There's our top. And we lock it down. And it screws right onto the gun like this. Boom! Now we can go in the paint booth just like this. I'm going to keep it upside down and show you what I was talking about earlier about getting this to spray upside down. All right, before we get to spraying, we got to talk safety real quick. This stuff loves to stick to skin. I'm using a head sock because last time I did this without a head sock, I had paint in my hair for a couple weeks. Yeah, it's not fun. It's nasty. So I have a long sleeve shirt on, uh, safety glasses, but most importantly, a decent respirator. So I'll leave part numbers below. I got all the stuff in my Amazon store. Um, but before we get going, so I'm going to spray without this on real quick, just so I can talk. We talked about that paint cup inside here. We're going to spray this upside down until paint comes out. Bam! Now that's the perfect spray pattern you want as well. Notice it looks like an oval. It's exactly what we're looking for, so I don't have to change anything on my gun. So let's get to work, shall we? By the way, that's what the cup looks like well, after we were done spraying it upside down. So that means I can spray in any angle and I won't get any air gaps. My goal here is two very light coats. You get too much on there, it's gonna run. And we're gonna test for tackiness after the first coat. When it tacks up and it's in between wet and dry, that's when you put your second coat. If you wait too long, you gotta wait like 36 hours, scuff the whole thing, and paint again so that's why this is critical you allow yourself enough time and i don't know how much the accelerator is going to work here so that's our test here we go i almost forgot make sure you have a ton of light that's why i got this thing on my head yeah ton of light outside light up light i have like five lights going on there's a ton of overspray is going to happen we want to see what we're doing you want to be about that far away when you're spraying Alright, before I take the masking down and the booth down, I wanted to show you the results. <laughs> Looks so nice, but you can see how handy this booth comes into play. That's all over spray, and I forgot to say, when putting on the ground, put some cardboard on top, because this likes to stick to your shoes when it's wet paint. So, put some cardboard down, uh, makes it easier to walk around <laughs> in the plastic, but other than that, it looks pretty awesome. So I'm gonna give it a day to dry and then I can start handling it with my hands. Well, that was easy, kinda. <laughs> yeah, the hardest part about spraying is actually the masking part. And that's one of the many things I learned. Uh, with this piece in particular, it's large, it's bulky. I should have done a slightly larger paint booth because I didn't have enough room on the sides and I have a tiny bare spot. It's not totally bare. I can hit it with a paintbrush when, after I install it. Not a big deal, but that's what I learned. Uh, the accelerator worked really good. It started to tack up after 15 to 20 minutes, which was awesome. Um, if you're gonna, oh, speaking of which, I experimented with a couple different techniques. One was 
uh, a light coat and a light coat. That's this area, it looks a little dull. I would have followed that with a medium wet coat. So this area here, it's shiny, you can see my hand in there. That's a light coat with a medium wet coat as the second coat, turned out great. So that worked out well for me. Um, oh, speaking of which, if this is going to be in sunlight, whatever part you're painting, you need to cover it with a UV coat. So this is not UV protected. POR 15 makes a top coat that would be UV uh, resistant. You need to hit it with that when the second or third coat flashes. You need to put the, the top coat on. So keep that in mind when you're painting. Make sure you have enough time in your day to do that. Uh, what else? Oh. Paint in the gun, I got this question last time. It's okay to leave your paint in the gun in between coats, but I take the cap off and I clean it between coats, put the cap back on, you know, wipe the needle where it comes out, uh, just so it doesn't solidify on there so you can't spray. And uh, gosh, what else? Uh, next episode, if you're following the chassis stiffening project, we're gonna put this back in the GTO and we're gonna make it permanent by welding it in. After we weld it in, I'm not going to film it. I will be brushing on POR 15 on those joints. Yeah, it's going to be a fun process. I can't wait to feel the outcome. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys learned something. And until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.